Hello everybody, welcome to the first video in a series of videos that we're going to shoot here in the Computer Engineering Department at King Fahad University of Petroleum and Minerals in Dahran, Saudi Arabia. In this first video, we're going to interview Dr. Mohammed al -Rabha. Dr. al -Rabha is an Associate Professor in the Computer Engineering Department. He joined the department in 2001. Dr. al -Rabha obtained his BS in Computer Engineering from Kuwait University, Kuwait, in 1989. And then he obtained, he obtained his master's degree in electrical and computer engineering from the electrical and computer engineering department in, in the University of Waterloo, uh, what, Ontario, Canada. After that, he obtained his PhD also from the same department in 1995. After he graduated, he worked as a senior designer uh, with the Advanced Circuits and Technology Group at Intel, Portland, Oregon. He was part of the uh, he was part of a bad finding group reporting directly to the Intel Vice President for Technology and Development, where they do research and explore uh, new opportunities uh, for uh, Intel. So welcome, Dr. Mohammed. Uh, thank you, Dr. Yahya. So the first question that I want to ask you is, how do you define engineering? Okay. Uh, so actually, uh, th there are few uh, agreed upon you know, definition for engineering. Uh, one of the most prominent uh, definitions is that it's the art of applying basic sciences and developing uh, products or services. Okay? And some other people also define it as uh, uh, maintenance to that, actually, which is very important. So the, base, uh, the baseline here is that you're using basic sciences to come up with products or services or maintain existing products or services that really help people in their everyday life. Uh, another definition which is a little bit recent and uh, it came up because of the complexity of products uh, that have been uh, produced uh, recently. Uh, simply they call the engineering design is the process of refinement of specifications. Because right now rarely you have an engineer designing a single product from A to Z. So you have engineers they take very high level specifications of what is required and then they refine that into more detailed specification and give it to other engineers which in turn take these and refine them more and more until at the end you have the actual product. So gradual refinement of specifications and that applies actually to many engineering disciplines that have very complex designs. So for example if you take uh, the, a typical microprocessor nowadays like the iCore 7 or whatever, you have huge system. It's, we're talking about six processors in one chip. So you cannot imagine any person or any uh, uh, group of people possessing the whole required technological knowledge to do this on their own. So you have people working on high level, medium level, low level details of this uh, product. So this is the, the new standard in engineering is that this continual uh, refinement of specifications. Uh, you mentioned the word specification. Uh, what does it mean? So specification is basically like the requirements. So when you, whenever you have a design in mind or a service, I keep stressing the service because engineers don't only design products, but they design services. So a specification is what's required out of the end result it's in terms of functionality, in terms of performance, figures, and uh, so many things. So depending on the product, sometimes you know you have power specifications. It's a, it's an electronic product that you know you require certain energy uh, consumption out of that product, certain performance like gigahertz and all these numbers we hear out of electronic products. They refer basically to performance specifications. Uh, if you're designing a mechanical product, then you have mechanical specifications. You know how uh, how much, for example, energy it can absorb before it breaks. So if you're designing some product that might fall down. This is part of the specification, you know, how far it can fall before it breaks. So there are many forms of specifications, mechanical, electrical, uh, beha uh, behavioral, performance, functional. But any product uh, usually has specifications. If we don't have specifications, we don't need engineers, basically. So now it's good that we know what's engineering. But what is computer en engineering in particular? Okay. So as I, as I said, uh, engineering is about designing services and products. 
So computer engineers, again, they utilize basically all the IT capabilities, the information technology capabilities, to develop products and services that can help people in their daily life, can improve their lives, ease their concerns and pain. So it's the utilization of the IT uh, options or IT uh, alternatives, IT uh, products in such design. So it's basically they can design computers, they can design the IT product themselves, like computers, networks, switches, routers, all what you have. Or they can design services or products utilizing these basic uh, components. So it's a very comprehensive uh, approach to solving problems or producing products and services, but based on technology. So computer engineering is not only about designing digital circuits. Then. No, it's not just hardware uh, or, or just software. It's the integration of hardware and software components. And even there is a wide range of hardware components, not just computers or CPUs or processors or things like that, but you have many hardware components, uh, routers, switches, networks, uh, all these things, again, with software components to come up with a solution to a problem or a product that serves a certain need. So when a computer engineer proposes a solution, he can divide the solution into like a hardware uh, part and software part. Uh, this is what... Uh, exactly. There will be components from both worlds. So we have the computer engineering uh, program here. Um, it's five years. So after they spend their five years here in KFUPM and they acquire the necessary skills and knowledge, how do you think a computer engineer can contribute to the society? Okay. So actually, I'll, I'll be a little bit more specific to our local situation here in uh, Saudi Arabia and our, our graduates, uh, because our program really have uh, sort of two focus, or uh, two focus areas, uh, what we call like computer systems and computer networks. So basically, if you combine these, uh, along with the software knowledge that our students get, uh, they can develop products or services that, for example, uh, based on you know cheaper communication, uh, providing uh, more efficient solutions uh, for doing the same things people are doing, so or providing new solutions that will enhance uh, the efficiency at the same cost. So basically, you can summarize this in two possibilities: either improve existing business processes or manufacturing processes by uh, increasing their efficiency or reducing their cost. So you put in a computer engineering in any organization, he should be able to do one of these two or a combination of these two things. Either improve efficiency for the same cost, so uh, improving the bottom line for any organization, or basically coming up with new innovative solutions that can uh, reduce the cost while providing the same level of service. I remember uh, once that you were telling us about a visit you have made to one of the local factories here um, uh, in the, the MAM, I think. Or, and um, you were able to identify right away um, uh, one opportunity or several opportunities for a computer engineer where you can contribute to uh, the factory. Can you tell us ab uh, about uh, your experience there? Yes, actually this was a factory that was manufacturing uh, certain, I'm, I'm not going to identify the factory, but anyway, they were manufacturing a certain type of product, steel, based on, uh, or sorry, cast iron, and they had a, a huge percentage of rejects. So it's a very energy consuming process, and after the products come out of the pipeline, there was uh, a good percentage or a good portion of these products not up to specification and they had to bring them back and uh, melt them down again and use them as new feed for new products. So, uh, it's a very wasteful uh, operation for energy and so on. And when we visited, we could right away identify that uh, they could really benefit from a good computer engineer there. Uh, something like having uh, you know, quality control based on IT, you know, sensors, uh, putting sensors to sense these specifications or these uh, products, whether they comply to a specification or not, right early in the manufacturing process so that, and even provide corrective actions to the process itself, implementing a feedback 
system that improve the manufacturing process and reducing this waste. Unfortunately, they didn't have that. The, the concept of quality control uh, is a little bit undeveloped in many uh, places, which is very important, and it's a very uh, good venue for computer engineers to help. Because now, if you want to do any con quality control or quality assurance, you really need um, IT. It's going to be based on sensors, based on uh, technologies, and advanced technologies, and computers, and softwares, and very complex systems. And computer engineers are probably the only one that can develop such a system. Since you have been here for uh, almost 11 years, um, what are the job opportunities uh, for computer engineering graduates here in the local market? Uh, of course, they always have what we call the conventional opportunities, like uh, you know, administrators of networks or systems within uh, big organizations, like in IT departments and so on. Uh, these have been the classical or conventional job opportunities, but there are also other job opportunities which, in my view, are uh, more satisfying because they involve coming up with innovative solutions, just like the example I gave for that uh, manufacturer, uh, for that factory. So, in quality control, quality assurance uh, jobs in factories and things like that, in automation in general, automating services and in e-government, for example, e-government services and so on. So there is a wide range of job opportunities, uh, not just in uh, classical jobs like admins, but also uh, in the manufacturing sector, in government sector, in uh, uh, banking and all these sectors, where they can really provide services or products that automate transactions, automate day-to-day -day business automate manufacturing processes again to improve the bottom line of uh, manufacturers or reduce the cost and just enhance the efficiency of business processes and now I would like to ask Dr. Muhammad to show us some of the stuff that he has in his office okay mm. so actually uh, these are silicon wafers they're a little bit old and uh, as you can see, they got broken. Silicon is very brittle, like glass. And when I was moving around, uh, they got broken in shipping. Anyway, so this is an actual uh, silicon wafer that's not fa fabricated yet. Uh, this is a silicon wafer with chips that have been already fabricated, but not sewed up, was not cut. And uh, actually, this here, I don't know if you can see it, it contains silicon chips that have been cut or sold out from wafers but not packaged and uh, I have these packaged chips okay so you can see this small chip inside with the golden wires okay uh, okay so <clears throat> this these are just things that I show the students in, uh, in my field because I teach uh, design of integrated circuits here uh, in the computer engineering department and these basically rep represent the various levels of, of manufacturing so unmanufactured or unfabricated uh, wafer wafer with fabricated chips but not cut chips that have been cut but not packaged and finally chips that have been packaged uh, just to show the students what can be done and by the way these are all students projects but not here uh, these are student projects from uh, University of Waterloo and we're trying to establish uh, such expertise here in the kingdom actually in the CEO department we teach a course on VLSI or uh, digital ICs and hopefully uh, we're planning actually to manufacture or to fabricate some chips sometime during the next year and hopefully we'll be able to do that inshallah yeah, yeah. So, it will be a good experience but again it just shows the wide range of expertise that computer engineering uh, or computer engineers would have they have the ability to go down to chip level design actual hardware at, on the chip level and then they also can design uh, boards containing chips like uh, working with chips as components and then they can design complete machines they can design networks they can 
design services on these networks so they basically can do everything from the transistor level up to the service level or application level so this is also another example of uh, what our students work with actually uh, so this is an FPGA board a field programmable get array board so basically they can design any digital circuit and configure this FPGA uh, to implement that circuit and actually students do this in their first course in computer engineering actually and they can do very interesting uh, projects with that and as I said this is the second level so they can design on the chip level by the time they graduate they can design on the chip level the board level FPGAs uh, and they can even make P they will make PCBs they can make complete systems they can make embedded systems and uh, design applications to run on such systems